And joining us now is Reza Moridi. He is the Liberal MPP from Richmond Hill, and we welcome you to TVO. Thank you very much, Steve, for having me at I, TVO. I want to take you back to the 1970s. You are a student in the United Kingdom. That's you right. saw a demonstration at the American Embassy in London. Right. Go, finish the story. Well, uh, my wife and I, we were shopping at Oxford Street, London at that time, and uh, we noticed demonstration going on in the, in the square where the American Embassy is. And uh, we just said, Let, let's go and have a look, you know, see what's happening. That was during the Vietnam War time. So suddenly I found out ourselves uh, in front of the Canadian Embassy or Canadian High Commission in, in, in London. So I told my wife, let's go in and see how can we immigrate to Canada. So we went in and uh, there was a gentleman at the reception desk. I st started talking to him and he gave me brochures and uh, some information. And uh, so we took those brochures back home and looked at it. And, uh, and then we said, well, we should try, you know, we should apply for immigration. And then we said, well, no, we have to ba go back to our home country, Iran, to save our country. But uh, we didn't decide, we didn't make any application anyway. But, but, but that we was took, your first connection with that Canada. That was our first connection with Canada, and I kept those lovely brochures. You kept those, and we're going to hold that story right there because we're going to come back to that a little bit later. <laughs> Fast forward a decade, you are working <clears throat> at a university in Iran. It's 1987, and you suddenly find yourself purged from your job. What That's happened? Uh, well, it was a revolution, and after the revolution, uh, they start purging the universities, basically. That, that was what the revolutionary government decided to do. Uh, the reason being that, you know, they found that the universities are their biggest opponents, so they shut down the universities for three years. Can you imagine? In a country to shut down universities for three years, that's what they did. And uh, just after that, they start dismissing or purging, as they called it, the word purging they used, purging the academics. And I was one of those uh, academics who was uh, purged from the university. And was it at that moment you decided we have to get out of here? Uh, at that moment, yes. Yes, we decided to, to move out. Initially, you left and went to Fiji, but yeah. Canada came next. That's right. That's when those brochures popped into oh, your head. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, yes. What did you know about Canada beyond what you saw in those brochures that you took from the High Commission at the demonstration? Well, at that time, I didn't know much about Canada because I was quite young at that time, you know. Uh, and, uh, but later, I studied uh, about Canada. I, I, I had a series of... Uh, uh, Encyclopedia Britannica. So I, I, I love geography. I love history. So I, I used to, you know, open in my leisure time uh, my Britannica and then read about Canada, Canadian provinces, Canadian system of government, and all of that. So, so you knew all that before you came here. Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah, so you, yeah. you came here and you got established. What did you What did you do for a living when you came over? Um, well, when I came over, uh, I didn't have a job. Uh, I just came. You know, it was me, my wife, uh, two children, and four suitcases. <laughs> and that was it? Uh, that was it. So mm -hmm. we arrived on uh, February 9th uh, at um, uh, Pearson Airport, midnight. So that was that was February it. February so, 9th, what year? Uh, 1990. 1990. Yes. Now, you became a physicist, right? Uh, yes, I am. I'm a physicist. And did you do that here in Canada? Yes, I did, yes. Uh, after two or three months. Uh, well, I started, first of all, uh, just from day two, our arrival, I started looking for a job, applying for a job. And uh, I got the job at the... Uh, Radiation Safety Institute of Canada as a scientist, so I, that's where I started my job, and then later I moved up. That was your uh, first job in Canada? First, and um, before becoming the uh, MPP, uh, my only, only job, because I worked for the Institute for 17 years. That's a pretty good gig for a first job for, a, for a, somebody who showed up here with four suitcases, <laughs> don't you think? It, it was, absolutely, yes. I was lucky. Now, what made <laughs> you think about going into politics? Um, you know, um, see, I, I had always a uh, passion for politics since I was a student, uh, since I was a young boy, actually, even when I was in, in high school. Um, so I, I had always interest in politics. And uh, uh, while in Canada, uh, well, partly uh, going back to my interest, my, my passion, and partly uh, some friends within the Iranian community, some friends within the Liberal Party, they were encouraging me. And also I thought, you know, being coming from Iran, being an Iranian-Canadian, Canada has offered me and Iranians a lot, and we owe to Canada a lot. So it's time for us to give back to our uh, wonderful country, Canada. I gather it was the former finance minister, Greg Sarbera, who lives in Richmond Hill, who started to get you interested in joining the Liberal Party and then running for a nomination. But I want to know, did, did you know when you were thinking about this that nowhere at any legislature in Canada or the United States had someone from the Iranian <clears throat> community ever been elected? 
Well, I, I knew that in Canada we, we never, we didn't have any, any elected Iranian official to any office. But the United States, I didn't know. Later, I, I found that, the, that, that that is the case. I am the first Iranian to be uh, elected to any office in the whole Americas. I understand that while you were campaigning, you got calls from all over, right? That's right. Uh, t give me an example. Why would people call you? <laughs> well, people are interested. You know, uh, I mean, the Iranian Canadians from all over provinces, they got excited. And uh, uh, again, uh, that gave them the feeling that now they are giving back something to our country. So I, I think that was the feeling of the public. But did, uh, did people call you from outside your riding saying, where do I go to vote for you? Yes, yes, I, I have so many people calling me saying, why can't I vote for you? I, I would ask, well, where do you live? I live in London, I live in Windsor. I said, well, vote for liberals in Windsor, <laughs> vote for liberals in, in Vancouver, or, 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 or wherever you live. So yeah, that was the expectation. Is the Iranian community in Richmond Hill, your riding, right. so sizable that it would be enough to get you elected and that's it? Oh, no, not at all. The uh, Iranian community in Richmond is very small in comparison to other communities. About maybe 4 or 5% of population is uh, Iranian. So your, your uh, victory you obviously attribute to being able to oh, absolutely, absolutely. go beyond I, your own community. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I connected with every community in Richmond Hill, every community. And I'm very grateful to members of every community in Richmond Hill I'll who bet elected you are. me. <laughs> I'll bet you are. Well, take me to that night. October 2007, you win your first election. You therefore become the first person from the Iranian community ever elected in this country or the United States. What was that night like for you? Well, it, it was a great, great evening, great night, Steve. Uh, it gave me a great feeling that uh, now, uh, you know, myself and also my community, now, I, again, they feel that their dream has come true. Now they have offered something to Canada. And I, I, was, I, I felt that now I could serve my country in, 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 in this capacity, in the political capacity. So that was a great feeling. There is another side to this, uh, not saying to your story, but to this kind <clears throat> of a story. And that is, if you go back a couple of decades, I remember when Alvin Curling was elected the first black Ontarian right. to the Ontario legislature. And he's, he once told me that he had headaches every single day for the first year that he was an MPP because he felt the oppressive weight of having to represent an entire community on his shoulders. Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel that way? Um, I don't actually. I, I mean, I get calls from people uh, all over southern Ontario where Iranians generally live in, in Ontario, but I don't have that feeling. Why not? No. Well, because you are uh, representing more than just the Liberal Party, you know. I, You're representing an entire community in some that, respects. That, that, that's true. It takes a little bit of work, of course, but, uh, but I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying serving the public. So that's, that, I, I guess that's, that's the reason. I really enjoy serving the public. Do you worry about screwing up? No. no. Why not? Most rookies <laughs> do. Well, uh, you know, I've, uh, I've got some experience in life. Uh, so, um, so I think that that helps me to, uh, uh, you know, to be prudent, to be careful, to, uh, uh, to act with uh, some prudence. So hopefully I won't. Uh, of course, nobody is uh, free of mistake. You have six siblings, right? You yes, have. Let me see right. if I've got this right. You've got one who lives in Los Angeles. Right. You've got two who still live in Iran. Uh, that's right. You've got one in Sweden. That's right. You've got one in Turkey. That's right. And you're in Canada. That's right. Does this family ever get together? Um, well, we didn't have a chance to get together, you know. Uh, but I, I visited my, my, my siblings from time to time. Do you feel... <clears throat> A family, don't misunderstand the question, but a yeah. family this disparate and this around the world, uh, do, you, do you feel Iranian? Do you feel Canadian? Do you feel a citizen of the world? Which gets closest? Uh, well, now I feel uh, equally Iranian and Canadian. That, that, that's what I feel now. But are you comfortable anywhere in the world that you go, given how spread out your family is? Uh, well, uh, you know, I, I have siblings who are s uh, Swedish. My, my, my brother's children, you know, they're, they're mm. Swedish. Uh, uh, are they blonde-haired and blue-eyed? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, partly, <laughs> partly. And then another brother who's American now, the other brother who, is, uh, who lives in Turkey. Uh, but, you know, Steve, this is, the, this is the story of many Iranians after the revolution. The families are scattered all over the world, you know. Mm. Wherever you go in the world, you find Iranians. I have traveled almost all parts of the world, except uh, African continent and the South America. And wherever I have been, uh, I've seen Iranians. Mm. I know you're Iranian, <clears throat> but your last name ends in a vowel, and you represent a riding in York Region, where right. there is a sizable Italian community. Right. Do people sometimes think you're Italian? Oh, yes, they do. Sometimes they, they think that I'm Italian. And uh, I respond, yes, I am, but 50%. 50% Italian? Yes. How do you figure? 
Uh, well, um, they asked me, you know, is it your father Italian? I said, no. Your mother Italian? I said, no. And I said, how it comes? I said, my granddaughters. I have two Italian Canadian granddaughters. So <laughs> one of your kids married an Italian. <laughs> That's right. That's how it works. Yeah, okay. Italian Canadian. Yeah. I see. Very good. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you two more things. Number one, Iran, of course, is still very much in the news. And Hillary Clinton said something at the Pennsylvania debate not too long ago uh, when asked, you know, if, if Iran attacked Israel, what would the United States do? And her response was quite strong in the views of many, <clears throat> that essentially, the, you know, they have enough power, the United States, to obliterate Iran, right. and they wouldn't hesitate to do so. What would you think of that answer when you heard that? Um, well, I think that's a pretty strong answer uh, to, to that question. But uh, generally speaking, I don't see that, uh, that that's happening, though Iran may, you know, may um, uh, threaten Israel and other countries, uh, mainly Israel. Uh, you have seen those uh, uh, unpleasant comments from the president of Iran, which is not unusual of that person. Uh, but practically, that is uh, something close to impossibility. Do you think he's crazy, Ahmadinejad? Um, well, I, I, I don't use that word, but, but uh, it's not a wise person anyway. I mean, as a wise politician wouldn't act the way they do. You wish somebody else was in there? Well, of course. What, what, when you think about the future of your former country, what comes to mind? Uh, well, you know, Iran is an ancient country with, with uh, very rich uh, civilization, very rich culture, and I'm sure people will get through this, uh, this hurdle. We have been in history, we know, in our you know, long history of Iran, of over 25 uh, centuries, uh, there was ups and downs, and there was foreign conquest and all of that, and uh, uh, pe people have gone through those, and I'm sure people will go through this, uh, um, this um, uh, system of, of government in Iran as well. I think things will improve in the future for sure. Uh, suffice to say you'd like to see an end to the theocracy as soon as possible. Uh, I do so, yes. One last question, sir. Fill in the blank. My time in public life will have been worth it if I can achieve what? Well, you know, there are various issues we are facing in, 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 in Ontario. Uh, one of them is our transit system. If we can make improvements to our transit system, this uh, $17.5 billion transit uh, plan, if we can make that happen, I think that will be a great contribution to our province. The other uh, major issue is lowering, uh, improving our healthcare system, which is absolutely a great asset to our country and our province. If we can make improvements in that area, I think that's also a great achievement. And is that something that <clears throat> one person can make a difference on? Um, well, uh, none of these things can happen by one person, but at least people like me as a politician, we can make a difference. We can make a contribution. I appreciate your time, uh, Reza Mariti. Thanks so much for coming into TVO tonight, and yeah. good luck and at, uh, with your new job at the legislature. Thank you very much, Steve, for having me in your program. <laughs>